crotch, bring it back. Single leg swing. Let me teach you how to wrestle. Okay. Let me teach you how to wrestle. Right. Hit the awesome wrestling clinic at Rutgers University with Sidikov, pound for pound number one wrestler in the world from Russia who won't be at the Olympics. Crazy. So a lot of you have seen our content by now. You've seen some of the clips when Sidikov came to Rutgers University and had a clinic. I was able to interview him one on one. Well, not exactly one on one because we, have, of course, we needed a translator, but we got to speak a lot. We talked about mindset. We talked about his approach to the sport, and it includes also when the the wrestlers were asking him questions at the end of the clinic. So let, let me give you some of my in, initial thoughts about everything. First of all, he took everyone through a dynamic warm up. Now, dynamic warm up different than static stretching. Static stretching is when we hold our muscles. That's not the best way to warm up. You need to get your whole body moving. And this was a 20 minute warm up. Now, and it was and it was all inclusive. His entire body. I mean, he literally got his entire body warmed up. All those little muscles. There was just a lot of movement. He was turning in different directions which was great to see. A lot of times we work the frontal plane and the sagittal plane, but we don't work the transverse plane where we turn all the way around. Well, he did a lot of twists and turns, which is real important for a sport like wrestling, obviously. So he, 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 warm, he warmed himself up. And then when I spoke to Yara, who was the, who was the translator for Sidikov, I asked him about, is this typical in, in former Soviet countries. And he said, oh yeah, at the Russian nationals, he watched people from all over Russia and they all had the same, pretty much the same exact warm up. Why is this the case? Well, one of the, you know, again, not, not we obviously communism, no good, but one of the things that communism made possible was standardization across an entire nation, which again, that, that could hurt him innovation a little bit, but what it does is it gets everyone on the same page and best practices are shared across the country, which is huge because now you have everyone getting access to the best information available. Like I said, the downside is you don't have as much innovation, but then again, when you, when you look at the wrestlers, there's, they're pretty darn innovative out there, but it, you know, might not be exactly the same as like, let's say America where everyone's cut, where all different, all the different groups are running kind of their own show. Nonetheless, Russia standardized warm up. He had that done. We filmed that. We filmed that whole thing. That was great. Like I said, um, I've been incorporating a lot of that just into my basic exercise. Instead of just doing straight jogging, doing all those things that he did. It's not, and it's not that um, I never did these things. Not like we never did these things in America or when we were warming up at Penn. We did a lot. We did a lot of this. It was just a good reminder that you have to get your whole body warmed up and. Interesting point is that this is part, this is considered part of the workout and exercise. In other words, in our head in America, we tend to bracket the warm up as like not really part of the workout. It's just something I have to do to get my body ready. They're looking at this as part of the workout. I hope you understand the difference there. It's not in other words, it's not something to just get out of the way. It's something to be fully engaged in. That's part of your wrestling training to make you a better wrestler. And it's done every single workout. 20 minutes. Um, I know Florian over at Olympic, Florian Guinea over at Olympic Wrestling Club, they do this too. There's about a 20 minute warm up that before every, every one of his workouts, they go through that looked very similar to this. So you're seeing this overseas that it's, this is not just, oh, jump right into wrestling. You're, you're, you have a full warm up. And again, um, it's not like it's not as common in America, but I, I thought it was a little bit more all encompassing. Like your, your whole body is warming up his neck right down to his ankles. There, there was no stone left unturned there. Okay, so that was one thing, his, his warm-up. Then he showed, his, he showed some technique, of course, his, his patented outside step, which everyone loves to see. We got a lot of great uh, traction on those videos, Olympic champs, world champs, UFC fighters commenting, uh, and people from all across the country on, on that video footage we got on Sitikoff showing his famous outside step. Then I had some time to sit down with him. Well, before that, people were asking him questions about, you know, they, there was the basic questions that you hear people ask all the time. Who was tougher, Burroughs or Dake? Um, he actually said Burroughs. Now, I actually, I, he said Burroughs was like he was made of metal. And I know we said this in other interviews before that we might have seen on Flow Wrestling. But here's, here's a thought that's, that's in my head. He, well, first of all, he said Dake wrestles more like um, a Russian. In other words, he, he's... He's more of an international feel, whereas Burroughs, you know, more of a straight on um, double leg guy. Right. So um, one thing that ma makes me think of when when Sitikoff was coming of age and he was getting he was bursting onto the scene or before then 
Burroughs was the guy. So Burroughs was like legendary status in Sidikoff's mind. So I don't know if that's clouding his judgment. Meanwhile, Dake, who is awesome, was just never the Team USA representative for many, many years because he was always behind Jordan Burroughs. And most of the time, right behind Jordan Burroughs. And if the tournament was structured differently, he might have been in front of Burroughs. But he wasn't a guy who was in his head. So I think it, it could have been affecting um, Sidikoff in his mind because he didn't have that, 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 um, that star power probably for, for Dake as he does for Burroughs. Nonetheless, that was, that's more of like a silly question. But some things that Sidikoff did say with the, with the wrestlers asking him questions as well as when I interviewed him is that he said he had doubts. He struggled with doubts. Can, can he be successful? And when they were setbacks. And I, I think the basic thing this makes me think of is that he's human, right? Think back to Rocky IV. And <laughs> coincidentally, we're talking about another Russian. He's cut. He's not a machine. He's a man, right? Well, we, we forget that sometimes. When we, when we look at people in other countries or even when we look at some of the best in America, we, we have this tendency to make them into superheroes and we forget that he's just a man. He's just like anyone else, Right. He's, he puts on he puts on his pants one leg at a time, just like everyone else. Except when his pants are on, he wins gold medals. But either way, he's just a man. He has doubts also, and he was able to overcome that. Another great point Sidikoff made was that um, he has a lot of confidence. Why? Because every one of his workouts, he knows he gave his very best. He did everything he could in the workout, and that gives him confidence. Basic point: you hear this from countless other wrestlers, but. It's worth mentioning and worth leaning into again because he lives a good life because he does things right on and off the mat in his workouts. He gives his very best. He has confidence in himself. He also talks about how hungry he is, that he really wants to be the best, that he doesn't train to take second place. Now, you might think from that that he's overly focused on winning. No, he actually said he's fo he's focused on going after it, attacking. Like, he is he is looking to win, of course. Like, all the best wrestlers, he's, he's looking to win. But he doesn't have that fear of not opening up. In fact, he said, interestingly, that the biggest fear that he sees is people being afraid of getting tired. Now, I, I'd worked with Division One teams myself, and I noticed that even at the highest level, teams with um, multiple All-Americans, that their, their team's biggest struggle, the coaches told me, was fear of fatigue. Well, there's Sidikoff saying that, it, it sounded like that might be the norm that he sees probably more over in Russia, but the fear of fatigue in my mind, that's, that's a little bit inexcusable because that's something that's directly in your control. Uh, like, yes, that's true in America, but I don't think that that fear is as great in America. And I, I don't think that should be a strong fear because that's how hard you work. You could put that in. And again, we know he is working hard, but we do know that Americans tend to be in the tip top shape. They tend to be, best conditioning in the world. And I think that's a great thing. We should be because, again, there's no excuse to show up out of shape. You could completely control that. Um, as far as opening up, he says he knows that he's got to open up and score points to win a gold medal, which, which is what he's looking to do. I asked him if sports psychology is available in, in, in Russia where he is. Because remember now, Russia, we, and Valentin Kalika told me this when we spoke about it, when, when we think about Russia, we're thinking about the whole country. He said, but that's not really how um, Russians and the Soviet nations really look at Russia. He said, Ru Russia, I don't want to say Russia proper because it's all Russia proper, right? But um, the, when, when they say Russia, within Russia, a lot of times they're, they're speaking of a very s relatively small area near Moscow, right? Whereas you know, Dagestan is its own region. Yakutsk, where Pinne Pavel Pinnigan was from, Roman Dmitriev, and, and many others. That's, these are different areas. That part's over China. The one part's on the other side of the country. We're talking about thousands of miles that are splitting, splitting up these areas. Not, that's not true with other countries. But Russia is very spread out. So different access to different people. And when I asked him about sports psychology, he said they don't have, they don't have a lot of access, I guess, where he's from to sports psychology. And, and that's a shame because you think about how much better all these guys could be, how much better he could be. And that, that might be a funny thing to say about an Olympic champ. But again, when he was answer, answering questions from the kids, he was saying he, he struggled with doubts just like anyone else. So again, having that access to mindset and sports psychology – would have been huge for him, just like it's huge for any wrestler. So, like you said, 
they're a lot of times where, where he's from in Dagestan, very poor, um, you know, much less fortunate than we are. We should be capitalizing on all the resources that we can. And he said, people are tough because of the harsh conditions. And I remember when I met Pavel Pinnigan, who was an Olympic champ uh, from Russia uh, in the Yakuts region back in 1976. And he's a four-time world champ, so three-time world champ, one-time Olympic champ. And we asked him what made him so tough. He said it was the cold. So, yeah, sometimes these people have incredibly difficult life conditions that make them really tough, and they don't have mindset or sports psychology. But think about this. How many of us grow up in those kind of seriously adverse conditions that can toughen us up? Not many. So we need that mindset training. Also, for all the people that became a massive success under those very tough and harsh conditions, how many of those people had the talent but failed or came up short because they didn't have just a, just a little bit more of the basic resources to put them over the top? So, you know, when you listen to it right away here, when he says they don't they don't have a lot of sports psychology and you think, oh, yeah, you see, you don't need sports psychology. I would I would back that up a little bit. I would walk that back and I would say, well, think about it. He's very blessed that he was able to make it through without that kind of help. He struggled and he was able to perse per persevere through it. Um, that's not everyone. And that's not saying anything about toughness. If you can't do that, it's hard. And we find that to be the best. You have to be a little bit lucky. The stars have to align a little bit. And I know luck is what happens when hard work meets opportunity. But let's face it. You need to do everything you can to reach your goals. We're blessed to be in America and to have these resources at our fingertips. Um, if other people in the world don't have access to a strength coach, nutritionist, sports psychologist, like, yeah, okay, so some people can get it done. But why leave it to chance? You have the resources. You better capitalize on it. Sidikoff spoke about the importance of, of his faith and how that keeps things in perspective. And again, overall, it was just, just an awesome interview that I just got to sit down right next to, right next to an Olympic champ, multiple-time world champ, uh, possibly the best pound-for-pound -pound wrestler in the world right now. Man, I would have really loved to have seen him wrestle Dake. And that was interesting well, at, the, at this Olympics. I would have really loved to watch him wrestle Dake at this Olympics. Um, also, interestingly, when he spoke to the kids, they asked him if he's done, if he's done wrestling and if he's going to pursue mixed martial arts, UFC. And he said, yes, he was done. But then in the back room, when everyone was away, he said to us privately, he doesn't know for sure if he's done with wrestling. He might wrestle again. So, you know, difficult thing. There's a lot of things that are lost in translation. I needed Yara, the heavyweight from Rutgers, to translate all, all these all these things. Who knows what was said right in front of me that I that I didn't understand and in fact, one of the things I thought was how great Dave Schultz was to realize and, and that insight and the, the presence of mind, the thoughtfulness to see, hey, the best wrestlers in the world, in the world are Russian. I should learn Russian. Uh, didn't Andy Rovat do that too? I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he knows Russian. I don't know if, he, if, it's, if it's native or it's something that he's learned or if he's improved upon. Or did it, maybe Jake Herbert did it also? Well, I know Jake Herbert, Andy Rovat, both of them, they, they put together base wrestling, which is an awesome system of progression for wrestlers to train like the, Soviet, like the Soviets. I don't, I don't see it on YouTube anymore. I have to look up where you could find that, but it's base wrestling. Um, Andy Rovat and Jake Herbert, really awesome stuff. But Dave Schultz was a pioneer. He learned Russian, then he was able to communicate with these people, and he was one of the most beloved wrestlers ever all across the world. So it would have been nice to have known Russia, Russian when Sidikov was there. The only thing I could say to him was spasiba, which, of course, is thank you. Maybe not, of course, if you didn't know that. But awesome, awesome event. I hope you really enjoy this podcast. Learn from it. Listen to what he's saying. Watch what he's doing and try to incorporate it. Remember, I mean, by and large, the Russians, they're the, they're the best wrestlers in the world. And in terms of having a systematic plan that's standardized across the country, you really can't beat what the Soviets um, do. I mean, I, I think in America, we have a lot more talent than them, and they're still able to beat us most of the time. Not rooting for them. I want USA all the way. But man, it's just great to see the best wrestlers in the world. And you know, I was making this point to, to my kids um, today in the car. I was, I was saying to them, you know, the best wrestlers... We learn from everyone, and it's not and it's not a matter of and, and it's and it's not a matter of um, being arrogant or cocky. Like my coach Don Ernst used to say, he used to say, you know, none of this. And, and my son, my son started laughing. They're five and three. Like, what are you doing, Daddy? And I said, none of this, which means your nose is up in the air. You're snooty. You're not. You're not. Um, 
you know, you look down on other people. Don Ernst told me this lesson back in the, when he was back in the 70s and he was the team USA scouting technician uh, from 1975 World Championships, 76 Olympics, 77 World Championships, 78 World Championships, 79 World Championships. Don was the flow wrestling before flow wrestling came out. And Bader even said that when he was acknowledged at the, at the U.S. at the U.S. World Team Trials one year. And Don said that he was in the room. He was in the room. Um, before the tournament or after the tournament at the world championship. And there was Takata from Japan and then Demi and Vladimir human from Russia. So these are two, these are two multiple time world champions. Takata is a four time world champ human three or four time world champ from Russia. And he's, and, and these guys were around the same weight. And Takata says to human, he says, you excellent. And human goes, no, 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 you excellent. None of this. Don always said that to us. None of this. No nose in the air, Snooty. We're we're learning from each other. It's the it's the world of wrestling, the brotherhood of wrestling. So we want to learn from everyone. Awesome time with Sidikov. I was very blessed to sit down with him, um, shake his hand, meet him man to man, interview him privately outside of everyone else, as well as to watch his clinic. So it was a great thing. I hope you guys all enjoy the clinic. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. Mindset makes the difference. The time is now to take your mindset to the next level with Wrestling Mindset. Make sure you go to our website, WrestlingMindset.com, and sign up for your free trial session today. Don't wait any longer. You want the mental edge right now. When you sign up for the free trial session, you're also going to get a copy of our free ebook, Building the Predator Mindset. This book has helped thousands of people build confidence, relax under pressure, get motivated, and build mental toughness in wrestling, school, and life. Make sure you sign up for your free trial session today. So I own, a, first of all, spasiba. <laughs> Thank you. I own a big sports psychology company and YouTube and Instagram page. Большой фанат борьбы, да? Большой фанат, у него своя компания по YouTube, Telegram. Да, 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 у них своя компания по психоэмоциональной подготовке и вот для спортсменов. Это что такое вообще? Психоэмоциональный? Ну, is sports psychology very available in Russia? Mm -hmm. Do they talk about this a lot? У нас нету такого. Не, у нас нету такого. У нас наши тренера, наши психологи. Мы, скажи, горцы не нуждаются в психоэмоциональной поддержке. Мы, скажи, рождаемся и растем в тяжелых таких условиях. In the uh, we people, especially from uh, Asia and uh, Caucasian regions, where we just uh, we're being uh, we grow up and we are being raised in very sometimes harsh conditions, right. and that kind of we that helps us, that toughens up, and that yeah. helps us to 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 get to get tougher, to get get mentally stronger. Yeah. What are some of the things you told yourself to relax under pressure and to overcome doubts? Какие, что ты себе говорил э, в какие-то моменты, когда нужно было расслабить, ну, как моменты под давлением, под тяжелым давлением перед схватками, чтобы раза как-то расслабиться и преодолеть э, сомнения? Я всегда думаю о хорошем и вспоминаю о плохом. А плохое – это когда я проигрываю, я знаю, как мне тяжело будет, и я не хочу это испытывать. И а радость, это я всегда думаю о хорошем, когда я, к примеру, знаю, что я сейчас выйду и выиграю, я буду просто счастлив. Я хочу вновь и вновь вот это испытывать. И я не хочу, э, я не хочу э, там, чу просто чувствовать эту горечь поражения, это очень тяжело. Я поражение очень тяжело переношу, но если я проиграл, я э, делаю от этого большой просто вывод. He's saying that uh, I always think about two things. I always think about the good and bad. I always think about the the bad for me is when I lose, and the, that 
the feeling that I have after I lose. I, I'm a very competitive person. I like losing, and I'm always really hard on myself whenever I lose. So I always think about that. At the same time, I think about the good side, the the feeling I have after winning the match, that like the taste of victory, uh, that euphoria, that that helps me, and uh, I think that helps me to get ready for the match. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just he's. I'm not very. I, I don't like losing, and that's that. That drives me. That drives me to work harder. And whenever I lose, whenever that happens, I never find. I'm never looking for excuses. I'm going through a lot, like a big process, to figure out why that happened and to learn from that. Well, oh, because a lot of wrestlers sometimes are scared to try things out there because they're afraid of losing or making mistakes. Have you ever gone through that, and how do you overcome it? Многие бойцы боятся проиграть, из-за того, что они боятся проиграть, они не, 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 ну, не борются в полном силу, они боятся пройти, боятся сделать проход, ну, боятся что-то сделать. То есть как вот, бывали Потому у тебя что... такие мысли, да. как ты их преодолеваешь? Ну, конечно, такие мысли тоже бывали, но они боятся устать в самом первую очередь, они боятся устать. А второй очередь, это они боятся проиграть, потому что они не уверены в себе, не уверены в своих проходах и не уверены в своей работе. Вот, вот, просто простые ответы. I think it, it's, it's very simple. First of all, people are, I think, more tired of, uh, of getting tired. Just yeah. uh, getting tired, getting exhausted during the match. And that's why they might be hesitant. And then they're also tired of... Uh, и не уверены в своей работе. Я просто говорю в голове прокручиваю выйти и выиграть просто. Выйти и выиграть. Но всегда вот это прокручиваю, то, что э, я, я выхожу как на последнюю схватку, как на войну. Ну и просто я реально как на войну выхожу и я совсем другой становлюсь. Э, не, не, та, не то, что вы меня сейчас видите, такой вот скромный или тихий нет. Я просто выхожу и а, если там, грубо говоря, можно что-то сломать, то я буду ломать. Ну, как бы я выхожу как на войну, потому что я решаю исход своей схватки, исход своей судьбы. Если бы я в финале сейчас проиграл на Олимпиаде, я бы не был олимпийским чемпионом. Я бы был вторым, и меня бы не так воспринимали. Uh, he's saying that we never step on the mat. Uh, I just keep saying to myself, step up and win, get on the mat and win, get on the mat and win. And uh, I pretty much like, I'm not, I'm not a nice, not a nice person on the mat. Not, not, not as you see me right now, very nice and kind on the mat. I become completely different. It's, it's like a war for me. I step out. It's, I step out. And I go, I go to war, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to win. If If it was allowed, if there is a chance, like if I have to break something, I'll break it, and just to, just to get through, just to to beat the guy, just to win, and I'm yeah, ready to do whatever it takes. And if you, uh, then later he said that now you know me as an Olympic champion, but if I had lost in the finals, then it would have been a completely different story. So it's all about it's all about winning, it's all about that taking that extra step and being the best. So I. You, you, you know me because again I am the Olympic champion and I, I went to war and I won the Olympics again. What advice would you give to a kid to make them passionate about wrestling, to like wrestling, to want to continue? Какой бы ты совет дал детям, чтобы они полюбили борьбу, чтобы они продолжали бороться? Ну, полюбить борьбу это внутри, у них должно сидеть это внутри кому-то что-то навязывать, это неправильно. А то, что они должны слушать своих тренеров, то, что им тренер говорит, родители тренеров, и а, выполнять все, что они им говорят. 
И чтобы они всегда работали чуть-чуть больше остальных. Чуть-чуть, если они на друг друга смотрят и зачем. А это я больше детям должен рассказывать. Да. А, да. Эм, вот для меня тренер, тренер – это как воспитатель был изначально. Он меня воспитывал как мужчину. Не то, что как тренироваться надо, но воспитывал как мужчину. У нас менталитет такой – уважать старших э, и вести себя правильно в окружении. Э, когда есть э, вот такая такое воспитание правильное, тогда человек ментально, психологически становится сильнее. Это, там есть какие-то такие тонкости, но это очень важно в сфере жизни спортсмена, это очень важно. Объясни по простому, объясни да, что. Да, да. Да. Uh, like wrestling, love wrestling, it's hard to enforce that, so it has to come from within. Uh, but at the same time, the advice, the advice I would give is to, they still have to listen to their coaches, uh, listen to their parents, respect coaches and parents, respect the elders. I think that comes from, from our culture and uh, be hardworking and always try to do a little extra. So, for example, if a coach tells them to do 10 push-ups and you see your friend doing 12, You gotta do. You gotta do more. You gotta do 15. You gotta just uh, always try to do more. Always try to to compete there and do the best. Excellent. Last question: How has your faith, spirituality, and religion impacted you as a wrestler and as a person? Как бы вера повлияла на тебя, на твою борьбу, на тебя как человека? Uh, моя вера – это в, во что? В, 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 а, ну да, когда человек выходит и молится к Богу, к Всевышнему, конечно, намного легче становится. Uh, любой человек, он верующий человек, и uh, религия – это надо в это верить, конечно. Некоторые бывают сомнения, в сомнениях, и это очень uh, их такой подводит вот это в жизни, не только в спорте, в жизни. Человек должен жить с верой и с надеждой. И, конечно же, ставить перед собой цель и добиваться цель, мечту. Как говорят, засыпай с целью, просыпайся с... Нет, засыпай с мечтой, просыпайся с целью. Так говорят. Ну вот, это жизнь спортсмена. He's saying it has impacted me a lot, and uh, religion is is a big part of my life, and uh, I think it helps a lot of people to just to pray and to to feel better and like figure figure out everything that's going on in their lives. Uh, at the same time, I think it's uh, it's it's important for people to have uh, some sort of faith, and uh, but there are also the, the other part of it and. Uh, It's, it's doubts, and doubts also come, and that's gonna happen uh, to you in life with faith or with wrestling, with whatever you're doing. Doubts are gonna come, and it's your job to find a way to overcome them. And eventually, this helps me to have kind of cl my clear goals and uh, my dreams. That you saying that I, you go to bed with a dream, and then you wake up with a goal. That's that, there's like a saying in Russian for that. So it's. Mm. It, it helps me to translate my dreams into goals and to make them into reality. Thank you. Spasiba. And my, Thank um, you. myself, and my brother is a priest, and he, mm -hmm. we're all praying for you, your family, and for your father. Uh, спасибо, thank you, thank you. So my brother wrestled here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. his brother also here wrestled here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you will brought, you will <laughs> yeah. nah, nah, I know, I know. It happened. He Good luck, good luck. Thank you.